there, you've joined us for the fourth day of our camp. We hope you've had a great time so far doing the activities and the different things. Today's story from the Bible you can find in the book of John, chapter 3. Follow along and I uh, hope you're sitting comfortably and enjoy the story today. Well, it had been a really busy day in the temple. It was the kind of place where loads of people would gather. Maybe it's a bit like one of our uh, supermarkets or a shopping mall today. Well, the temple had been full of people because Jesus had been there teaching them. And he'd had a really busy day. And it had come to the evening and people were probably still hanging around, just wanting to talk to him before they had to go home. And it was beginning to get dark and there was maybe a few shadows starting to creep in on the temple. And Jesus was just there by himself, probably just exhausted after a long day. But in the shadows, a man named Nicodemus came to Jesus. He wandered along, probably not really wanting to be seen, and we'll find out why a bit later. But he came and he asked Jesus some questions. His questions were a bit like this. He said to Jesus, Teacher, we all know that you've come from God and that the things you say come from God because your miracles prove it. The way that you act with power and heal people, for example. Nicodemus was saying, we know these things are real and we know that you come from God. Now, what was really interesting is Nicodemus, he'd come to Jesus, kind of just wanting to uh, gain a bit more knowledge and wanting to try and understand a bit more about the Jewish religious system that he was part of. You see, Nicodemus, he was a genuine seeker. He wanted to understand. But Jesus fired back at Nicodemus with a question. He didn't just uh, answer his question directly, but he um, fired back with something. And he said, I tell you the truth, Nicodemus, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, this probably came as a real surprise for Nicodemus. You see, he was one of the most well-respected, one of the most well-taught, and probably one of the most well-thought-of religious leaders of the time. If you'd have shown him the first five books of the Bible, they were known as the law, and maybe some of the books of the prophets, he would have known them inside out. And yet, Nicodemus didn't really know what this um, truth of being born again was. He didn't really know how to see God's kingdom. And so he had to go and ask Jesus. Well, Jesus explained that you cannot see the kingdom of God unless you're being born again. Now, Nicodemus could have said, well, I've never heard this before. I've been around ages and I've never heard you need to be born again. But he didn't. He just simply said to Jesus, how? How is this possible? There was no kind of questioning of saying you must be crazy. He just simply wanted to know how. He said, how can anybody go back into their mother's womb and be born again? You see, Nicodemus had kind of missed the point. He was thinking on this world kind of plane. He was thinking about physical things. But Jesus was speaking of something far more important and actually uh, far more lasting than this earth. He was speaking about spiritual truths. Jesus then said, look, I assure you that you won't be able to enter God's kingdom unless you've been born of water and of the spirit. That is like um, Nicodemus, unless you really look at the Bible, that is God's word, that's what water often symbolizes. Unless you've been born using the word and using the spirit, you will never ever see the kingdom of God. Jesus said to Nicodemus, look, human people reproduce human life, but you need someone spiritual to reproduce spiritual life. You see, Nicodemus, he was spiritually dead. I think that's probably why he felt a bit of an unrest inside. He probably thought, you know what, I know all this stuff, but I don't really know God. And it's very easy to get like that. We can know loads of stuff about all kinds of things without really knowing God, the God who made us and the God who loves us. Well, Jesus says, look, Nicodemus, don't be surprised when I'm telling you that you need to be born again. You need to be born of the Spirit. And you know, the Spirit just blows here and it blows there. In other words, he was saying, look, it's not something you need to try and understand. It's just something you need to believe by faith. You can't explain it, but we just need to believe it. Well, Nicodemus, he probably could have thought, if I can't understand it, I don't believe it. But he didn't. You know, that's often the case with a lot of people today. They kind of say, if I can't understand it, I won't believe it. 
But Nicodemus just said, okay, how are these things possible? Well, Jesus was explaining to Nicodemus, look, you're a well-respected teacher. In other words, you know um, the Old Testament inside and out. People look to you for advice, but when I say these things and you don't believe me, how can I expect you to believe me about the things of heaven? Now, what was really interesting is Jesus was saying, look, Nicodemus, you've said that I've done miracles. You said that you believe that it was God's spirit working in me doing the miracles, and yet you're not believing. You see, Nicodemus, he was probably still trying to understand a little bit. But Jesus was just saying, you simply need to believe. Now, what Jesus then went on to say to Nicodemus was, Nicodemus, you're asking a question about heaven. You're asking a question about God's kingdom. The best person to tell you the answers about heaven is someone who has come from heaven. And Jesus was saying, I've come from heaven. He says, and miracles prove that. The things that he taught prove that. I've come from heaven. So Nicodemus, listen to me when I tell you about the things of heaven. And then uh, Jesus went on to give Nicodemus a bit of an Old Testament history lesson. He said, look, just as Moses lifted up a snake on the pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must also be lifted up. Now that would have instantly um, flashed a light bulb on in Nicodemus's mind. He would have thought back to the Israelites, the time when uh, Moses led them out of Egypt, the time when they walked into the wilderness, and the time when they began to learn about God, but also the times when they rebelled against God and they said, God, you're not looking after our best interest. You know, that's often what we think, is that God has either forgotten us or is punishing us in some way. But actually the truth of the Bible is it's just like one big story of rescue. God is just trying to rescue people. If only we will turn to him. Well, the Israelites, they rebelled one time against God and it was so bad that God sent a plague. And he sent this plague to try and turn them back to him. And you know, it was a plague of snakes. These snakes would bite people and they'd become seriously ill. And the people cried out to Moses and they said, Moses, we're getting really, really ill. We need some kind of help. Moses went to God and God said, look, Moses, take your staff and make a snake and wrap it around the top of the staff, make it out of bronze. And you've got to hold that up. And all the people have got to do to be healed, to be made well, is to turn and to look at that snake on the pole. Now, a modern doctor may think that's crazy. Let's get some medicine. But the lesson was this. Will the people trust what God has to say or not? And you know, that is always the lesson. Will we trust what God has to say in his word or will we reject it? It's our choice. I choose to accept exactly what God says in his word and try and live by it. And you can too. Well, the people, they would turn and they, some of them would look to that snake on the pole and you know, instantly, the moment that they turned and looked, they had life, they lived. They were no longer destined to die because of those snake bites. But you know, there were some who wouldn't look. They said, I'm not looking at a stupid snake on a pole. And they did die. They faced God's judgment. But those who looked, lived. And you know, Jesus was explaining to Nicodemus that just as Moses lifted up that snake on the pole, so he says the Son of Man. Now the Son of Man is another title for Jesus, or even God himself, or the Messiah, the one who was going to save the people from their sins. Jesus was saying, one day I will be lifted up on a cross. And now he's saying, like those Israelites were asked to look at the snake, Jesus is simply asking Nicodemus to look at him, look at Jesus crucified on the cross, and believe that there he was paying the penalty for his sin. And that is exactly what Jesus asks of us today, is that we would simply look to Jesus on the cross, recognizing that he there is paying for our sins. Well, you can imagine what Nicodemus was thinking as Jesus was explaining these things. I wonder if it was beginning to make sense. I wonder if there was a change beginning to happen in the heart of Nicodemus, because he was sincerely listening. And you know, if we sincerely listen to the words that Jesus says, a change begins to happen in our heart. And that is the Holy Spirit coming in and giving us new life, giving us spiritual life, so that we can understand the things of heaven, so that we can understand his word, and so that one day we can be sure 
that we'll go to be with Jesus in heaven, in his kingdom, when we die, when we move on from this life. Well, Jesus then went on to explain to Nicodemus the most famous Bible verse in the whole of the Bible. It says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have everlasting life. And then he went on to say that um, God didn't send his son into the world to judge the world, but to save the world through him. The only way that you and I can be saved is through putting our trust in Jesus. And he was saying to Nicodemus, the only way you can be saved is by putting your trust in Jesus. Saved from what? He said, saved from the judgment. You know, it's a harsh reality that we are all destined to die once and then face judgment, the Bible says. It's something we don't like to talk about. We don't really like to think about that. But the truth is this, that Jesus says, I can save you from that judgment. Now, Nicodemus was probably in his heart beginning to think, this sounds, well, complicated. But at the same time, it sounds incredibly simple. You see, Nicodemus was having to humble himself and just listen to Jesus and realize that he needed to be born again. Now, what's incredible is that after they parted that night, Nicodemus later stood up for Jesus. I think his heart had been dramatically changed. When everybody else was trying to accuse Jesus and find a reason to put him to death, Nicodemus stood up and said, this man hasn't done anything wrong. And later, after Jesus had died um, and, and his body was taken off the cross, Nicodemus was one of the men who helped carry the body of Jesus and lay him in the tomb of a man named Joseph. You see, Nicodemus was willing to risk his whole reputation. He was willing to risk his whole status within the community to follow Jesus. You know, the Bible says that actually when we follow Jesus, there'll be an awful lot of things that we leave behind. But we're following the truth. We're coming to the light, the Bible says. Now, there's a story of a man whose life was dramatically changed by the teaching of Jesus and by being born again in his heart. We all need to be born again. So that's maybe where we're going to leave it today.